In this video, we're going to demonstrate ultrasound mapping of cervical anatomy. We'll include views of the supraclavicular and interscaling block approaches, as well as tracing of cervical nerve roots to their respective neuroforamen. The patient here is positioned supine with the head turned away from the transducer. The first view obtained is that of the supraclavicular approach to the brachial plexus. Trunks and divisions are identified with key anatomic landmarks, including the subclavian artery and first rib. The omohyoid muscle is often visualized overlying the trunks and divisions. As the probe is translated cephalad, components of the brachial plexus are visualized between the anterior and middle scalene muscles. This view obtained is that of the inner scalene approach. Individual nerve roots are identified, including C5, split C6, and split C7 nerve roots. As the probe continues to be translated cephalad, the hypoechoic C7 transverse process is visualized. C7 is uniquely configured with a prominent posterior tubercle and largely absent or rudimentary anterior tubercle. The split C7 nerve root has now coalesced and is visualized next to the C7 transverse process. The vertebral artery is seen anterior to the nerve root and visible due to the absent anterior tubercle. The C7 transverse process is a key landmark for accurately identifying cervical segments due to the prominent posterior tubercle and rudimentary anterior tubercle. The vertebral artery is visualized anterior to the C7 nerve root and confirmed with Doppler. With continued cephalad translation, the internal jugular vein is visualized. The split C6 nerve root has also coalesced now and is visualized as a hypoechoic structure held between the anterior and posterior tubercles of the C6 vertebrae. The anterior tubercle is also known as Chassignac tubercle and is a landmark for stellate ganglion blocks. Unlike the C7 transverse process, the C6 transverse process has both an anterior and posterior tubercle. The anterior tubercle is typically larger than the posterior tubercle. This is demonstrated more clearly with the cervical skeletal model to the left. The vertebral artery enters the foramen of the C6 transverse process in the majority of individuals, but unlike C7, is not visualized as it is obscured by the acoustic shadow of the anterior tubercle of C6. As the probe continues to be translated further cephalad, the C5 nerve root is now visualized between the anterior and posterior tubercles of the C5 vertebrae. The structure has similar features to that of C6. The C5 transverse process has both an anterior and posterior tubercle of similar size with the C5 nerve root positioned in between. The corresponding structure is seen in the cervical model to the left. Tracing the nerve roots in this manner is helpful for numbering cervical segments and accurately tracing structures of the brachial plexus. The characteristic morphology of the C7 transverse process and its relationship with the vertebral artery is the most important landmark in the sequence. The morphology of the cervical transverse processes and their relationships with their vertebral artery are demonstrated again on this CT angiogram. The star represents the expected location of the C7 nerve root. The absent or rudimentary C7 transverse process is visualized and contrasted with the morphology of the more proximal cervical segments, including C6 and C5. Mapping of the cervical nerve roots also facilitates performance of ultrasound-guided selective extraforaminal cervical root blocks and stellate ganglion blocks.